Blessings and welcome everyone. Just a reminder before we begin, your rising sign horoscope will give you additional clarity as to how a great deal of your sun sign horoscope may show up, and your moon sign horoscope will give you the less prominent side story that'll also be playing out for this two-week period. Remember, horoscopes serve best when observed, like a weather or traffic report. You have influence over all outcomes with your thoughts, actions, choices, and deeds. Use the information that presents to help you make the highest choices for the highest outcomes. If you wish to schedule any of my services or like access to more content via my Patreon, Patreon, follow the links below or go to my website, integrativemysticism.com. Hey there, Taurus! It's time to have a look and see what is going on when it comes to the week starting April 5th, 2021. And just a quick heads up for all y'all out there. Um, if you are part of my Patreon, right? If you're a Patreon supporter, thank you. By the way, the bonus weekly astrology report will be up here uh, by the end of the night tonight. It's Saturday as uh, I am making this video so you can check that out then also remember we are doing double passes when it comes to these readings so each section is having two themes or two events so that you can get a more thorough read on your week so what's going on when it comes to the astrology i want to talk about in this video well as of today the third of april when i'm recording this we just had mercury the planet of communications haste and speed and intelligence move into Aries, where he's going to be for the next two and a half to three weeks. This is your 12th house of your past, your privacy, and your hidden zone. And when Mercury goes into our 12th house, it's an opportunity to speed up developments with things that maybe have been left on a shelf, things that have maybe been um, either not necessarily avoided, though it could be avoided, but things that were forced to wait on other priorities, things that we've been forced to keep to ourselves, keep locked up, keep in storage, things that are maybe old, that matter a great deal to us, get some life breathed back into them so that we can actually start working with them and engaging them again. Mercury in the 12th house is also speeding up a lot of developments with things that you've got going on behind the thing, the scenes, excuse me, uh, whether it is, you know, uh, stuff that you are keeping out of the general public for now, or things that maybe you have been waiting to debut are going to start maturing and increasing in their value and in their quality in a very, very wonderful way. And with Mercury in the 12th house, we're also opening up conversations, especially when it comes to breaking down walls and, you know, getting the truth out about a lot of matters where maybe a lot of secrets, a lot of veils, a lot of old processing and things like that need to be revealed for what they are. Now, some of these might be secrets that you air or have aired, or maybe there are things that you weren't necessarily certain about that you were working on or things about yourself that you are now crystallizing and bringing forth into being. And yes, a lot of stuff coming to you in confidence from others as well. Getting to have closer relationships and closer communications and friendships because a lot of those barriers and a lot of those pigeonholes are gone. So what's going on when it comes to your cards? Well, for your spiritual themes, you have the hangman reversed and the ten of wands upright. And this week with the Hangman Reverse, I am seeing a lot of you Taurus people um, needing to kind of get things in a, in a way where you're not doing things with other people's stories in mind as much as you have. You know, with the Hangman Reverse, it's always a very inwardly focused card, you know, and sometimes in a, in a positive respect, it's about, again, getting everything back on track with what's true to you. Yeah, sometimes in a selfish way that, you know, if it's in a negative aspect, then it can show up where we, you know, we've got to be careful about being too selfish. But I'm actually seeing with the hangman reverse, this is you coming off the fence, you know, about a lot of things where your, um, your own desires, your own um, inclinations, your own attractions, your own intentions have been kind of stuck in limbo for however long. Maybe it's something that you've been processing for yourself. Maybe it's put you at a bit of a crossroads, but the hangman reverse is indicating, okay, this is a week where all of a sudden uh, it's time to start choosing your own road, regardless of what other stories are playing out. 
And we all live our own lives. We all have our own journeys, right? Even when it comes to things like family and partnerships, they work when all individual journeys are aligned. They suffer when all individual journeys are forced to conform. And of course, that's a, lot, a hard lesson a lot of people who might be kind of caught in uh, the matrix uh, are, are, are or are not learning. And some of them are trying to create new little matrixes themselves. But this is a time where you don't even have to have any part of that BS, you know, and it is with the hangman reverse. You are putting yourself and your own interest first, especially when it comes to things that are um, maybe a betrayal of your identity, even things that you didn't think you ever wanted to bring forward or share or come out with or, or um, you know, let be known. This is a week where it's time to get everything on the same page by not so much humoring journeys and stories and narratives that have nothing to do with your own journey in such a way, right? Uh, once we get that back on track, we can see where all these stories and all of these individual life streams uh, are in alignment or are not in alignment, but we have to detangle first, first and foremost. In fact, with the Ten of Wands upright as the second spiritual theme, a lot of you are going to be paying attention to where a lot of um, developments that maybe have slowed down or have been impeded in some way have to do with the fact that too many stories, too many priorities, too many intentions, too many creations are trying to all occur at the same time through the same channel or through the same avenue, assessing traffic jams, especially when it comes to even your spiritual work. You know, I've always been the first to say, look, you, you really don't want to try and do too much to create an incoherent working or an incoherent ceremony. Uh, you really want to, you know, it's this whatever you're doing, this this grid, this candle, this bag, whatever, you know, um, really isolate those intentions down to, to two, maybe three, um, if you are trying to create something specific. Otherwise, it's going to get incoherent and it's just going to be soup. This is very much a, a, very, a very similar energy that seems to be going on with a lot of your life. You've got to pay attention to where traffic jams have happened because we are trying to accommodate too much at once. Where can we simplify, do some very strong, very, you know, again, empowered selective reductions in order to get things back on track. As we get on to your material shifts, when it comes to your work, your job, your finances, you do also have the Eight of Cups reversed and the Devil reversed. And with the Eight of Cups reversed, I actually see some beautiful opportunities happening here, but they're opportunities that are coming back from either the past or coming back from um, spaces or from, you know, from avenues that we had not entertained in a while. Because with the Eight of Cups reversed, things are getting put back on the table. Things that maybe got stricken from the table or things that maybe uh, we couldn't entertain before, whether these are work opportunities, financial opportunities, money coming back as well. Because with the Eight of Cups reverse, there's always a return journey, whether you're returning to something uh, in a better way or it's coming back to you in better shape. We also have with the devil card reversed a clearing going on, the removal of some kind of trap, some kind of obstacle that has been actually quite pervasive in, when it comes to a practical matter, a practical concern, whether this has to do with your job, your finances, or your living situation, or a move, I'm not sure. But with the devil card reversed, a thorn in your side is also getting removed. There is a big cleaning of house that is also happening here, thank goodness. For your communications, friends, relatives, the guys, the girls, platonic connections, other people in your life, you have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse and the Six of Wands upright. Now, uh, I've got two events or two themes going on here. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune reverse is indicating a lot of you Taurus people are probably going to have to um, have some uncomfortable sit down or an uncomfortable 
a revelation or an uncomfortable recognition of where something that we have left in the hands of another or several others is being mishandled. It's not being taken care of very well. And it does look like uh, it's starting to suffer due to that lack of proper care. With the Wheel of Fortune reversed, it could be something that's just not being taken care of because it's not been looked at in a while. Or it could be that this person has ultimately boasted something they can't actually provide. However, on the other side of things, we also have, in a completely different manner, the Six of Wands upright. And we have this beautiful victory coming in when it comes to uh, you getting a lot closer with a friend or a relative and this alliance being formed that is actually boosting the power and, and popularity or uh, freedom of movement for all involved. And with the Six of Wands, this could actually be a huge boost to an existing bond. This could actually be something that... Um, lifts them up and you at the same time in other areas outside of this relationship. Because what I'm seeing with the Six of Wands is that there is a big breakthrough, but this is also possibly a situation where both parties are actually achieving a victory for their buddy. And so, again, it's not all bad. As we get onto your challenges this week, well, you've got the High Priestess upright, and the Page of Swords reversed. And these pair together very, very well. Uh, with the High Priestess, one of your biggest challenges here is really kind of maybe actually acknowledging truths that you have already accepted, but you are trying to live without addressing anyway. Sometimes with the High Priestess is a challenge. We see what's going on. You know, we know what our coworker is doing, or we know that this project is suffering, or we know that maybe... We're not handling something as well as we could, or we know that guy is wrong, or we know that person is not telling us the truth. But with the High Priestess is a challenge, it's kind of like we're not leaning in. We're not investigating. We're not calling it out. Maybe that's what we have to do, right? The Hangman reversed. Get back into alignment with your path and your journey. Wheel of Fortune reversed. Deal with somebody that maybe we've been giving too much credit to. The High Priestess acknowledging truths that have already been shown to you can be a challenge, but it must be done. The Page of Swords reversed, interestingly enough, is all about paying attention to where we also have to start not necessarily putting our faith in some of the grapevines we've been going through. You know, whether it's friends, whether it's business intel, whether it's family, the neighborhood, the Page of Swords reverse is indicating that there's going to be the sorting out of a lot of, uh, I don't want to necessarily say lies, because sometimes they're not bold-faced lies. Yeah, sometimes the rumor mill and, you know, the he said, she said stuff can be that way, but sometimes it's a hope speech. Sometimes it's trying to put a positive spin on something that just, you know, is better off being let go. This is a week where it's it's all about the truth. As we get on to your relationships with love, romance, and partnerships, well, you've got the Queen of Swords upright and the Knight of Wands upright. And with the Queen of Swords upright, uh, I do feel a lot of you Taurus people are going to be finding that um, a partner is also going to be stepping into a place where they are finally ready to start making some important calls or making some important adjustments to their position, their role, or how they are performing in this relationship in order to actually get things back on track, not just for themselves, but also for you. In fact, you're going to be noticing partners kind of making some very poignant call outs about certain situations that you might not necessarily think they've been paying attention to, but, you know, that gold is coming, you know, right out of their mouths. And I do feel with the Queen of Swords, this could actually be a very revealing week because it may also be that a partner has been observing something that you've been too close to to observe completely and for its entirety. 
For the Knight of Wands, I, this I feel is actually going more in the direction of you single Leo people. Yeah, I'm not Leo people. I'm thinking of, uh, I was thinking of something I was talking to a friend about the other day. Um, no, the Knight of Wands, this is going to actually show up as a completely um, new kind of approach to relationships for you Taurus people. Taurus, don't get at me in the comments. And... I feel like what's happening is that you are actually embarking on the indulgence of either a fantasy or finally having some kind of conversation with somebody that you do share a strong chemistry with. If this is somebody new, this may be something that actually catches fire very, very quickly, but, but that rapport is there. That rapport is genuine. The Knight of Wands is also indicating an inclination on the part of the other to see where this goes, really actually explore this story in earnest. You may also find that they're taking on a bit of that Queen of Swords energy as well with some very important call-outs, either about you or about things going on around you that are actually good for you. So that is what I've got for you, Taurus. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session with me, y'all go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com. Mm -hmm.